Welcome, I'm Pamina Barco. I'm CEO of South Star Medical Partners. I'm also a multi-time alum of UCI. Most recently, I'm an alum of the Mirage School of Business 2016 EMBA. I'm a very involved alumni. I'm currently the chair of the Dean's Advisory Board. Hi and welcome. I am Ramin Musavi. I am the President CEO of CathWorks. I'm also a multi-alum of UCI and a proud alum of Paul Mirage School of Business. And I am currently serving as a chair of DLC, Dean's Leadership Circle. And with us, we have Dean Ian Williamson. Thank you for having us. Uh, it's a pleasure. Thank you very much, Pamina Rami, for taking the time to speak with me today. And just more broadly, thank you for the amazing service that you're providing through the Dean's Advisory Board and the DLC. It makes a huge difference for our school. Dean Williamson, now that you've been at the Pomerage School of Business for three years, what are your initial impressions and experiences and how have they shaped you to lead the school? Well, I'll start with the impression part because I think my initial impression was a unique one. Uh, I started January 2021, uh, the peak of COVID, and uh, previously I was holding a role in New Zealand. And because of COVID, I wasn't actually able to come to the United States. So my initial impression of the Mirage School was very much a Zoom impression from New Zealand halfway around the world. So it was a unique experience of trying to understand this, this wonderful business school that I'd never worked in before and lead it for over six months halfway around the world. But I will say that, you know, in every challenge is an opportunity. And one of the interesting things that this created was because everyone was virtual. Uh, it actually made it easier for me to reach out to the members of the community. And so I took advantage of that and I spent a lot of time talking to business leaders and community leaders and educational leaders, K through 12 leaders across the region to understand, you know, what are the big problems and challenges they're facing? And I asked that question because I want to make sure that our business school was built around providing solutions to the issues that our community needed. And I've always said, you know, we know we're successful if the people in our community have a problem, come to us expecting an answer. So what are those issues that they're facing? And there were two big things that stood out as I, as I had these conversations. One, um, many of the business leaders constantly talked about trying to understand how is technology or changes in technology going to impact our business model? Am I going to be disrupted? Is this going to make what I'm doing obsolete? How can I best take advantage of changes in technology? And of course, at that time, everyone was thinking about, you know, digital technology in terms of Zoom and uh, AI was just beginning to come into our conversation. And so there was a lot of things that were happening that caused business leaders to say, we need guidance on this. The other big issue that people consistently pointed out was, assuming I figure out what my new business model is going to be, where will I find the talent that I need to actually execute this business model? And you can imagine at that time we're dealing with the great resignation uh, and you know, people are really coming to terms with the fact that the workforce we're dealing with today is not the workforce that we were dealing with 10 years ago. And I reflected a lot on those points and really thought about well, what could we as a business school be doing to provide those types of solutions. And I think that laid the blueprint for how we have moved forward since that point in time. And you know, the question we ask ourselves is how can we shape the future of business through technology, innovation, and, and also really providing an environment that's inclusive. And you know, what we came up with was two very clear pillars, that we wanted to be a business school that was about training the leaders for this digital economy that we're facing. Um, and we really wanted to be a place that trained leaders that sit comfortably at this intersection between technology, entrepreneurship, and business. And what we've done is we've weaved those concepts throughout our curriculum, regardless of the discipline that you're focusing on, you're gonna have a conversation around those three disciplines because we think those are the areas that will allow leaders to be successful going forward, that will allow leaders to understand how technology is shaping business models and see opportunities that perhaps others might miss. The other big pillar that we focus on is inclusive excellence. How can we ensure that we are a business school that is a platform that allows members of all communities to thrive in this space of technology? And you know, that's really important because we want to draw people from all communities, both domestically and internationally. And in doing so, and by training them with these skill sets, we're also generating a diverse and resilient workforce for Southern California. And I'm very confident in that because we know over 60% of our graduates actually take jobs here in Southern California. 
So our ability to get great talent from around the world, from around the country to come here, means we're gonna actually generate great talent for our companies that are based here. And so these pillars around digital leadership and inclusive excellence have really become our rallying call for the vision that we have for the school going forward. The concepts of inclusive excellence, innovation and technology are such important elements of today's education and core pillars to the school. Uh, how are you integrating these three important concepts into the strategy and operations of the school going forward? So we as a school spent about a year thinking about our strategic plan going forward. And we really spent a lot of time thinking about the details of where and how we would execute on this. What are our tactics to realize this vision? And it really falls into three areas. So we, we want to make sure we're doing some new things in our curriculum. Uh, this should impact our operations, how we actually perform here in the school. And perhaps most importantly, it has an impact on our talent. And so from our curriculum, you know, over the last three years, we've really been innovative. Uh, we uh, realized through COVID that distance uh, education allowed us to reach a lot of individuals that we previously were not able to reach. And we thought, you know, why not leverage this? And so this year, this fall, we uh, launched our Flex MBA. And this is our first time offering a degree where you can do the entire degree in person. You can do the entire degree online or you can mix and match based on however your schedule fits. And that flexibility, we think, will allow us to make our MBA more accessible to a broader range of professionals. We're not just changing the way we're delivering our content, though. We're also changing our content. Uh, also, this academic year, we, in our Master's of Professional Accountancy program, we launched a, a new track uh, that focused on ESG. And this is really appreciating that, you know, now more and more businesses are having to think about a broader range of issues and how they're better delivering on those issues. And so we want our accountants to be able to talk about environmental issues, social risks, governance risks, because we know that is something that is going to be of great importance for that sector. We've offered a new FinTech track in our Masters in Finance program to really take advantage of the fact that, you know, between LA and San Diego, it's hard to believe, there's over 400 FinTech companies. And so we want to prepare the workforce of that industry going forward. Uh, you know, we've offered our first virtual reality class. This was a big thing. So we, we were able to get virtual reality headsets. And this, this year, we launched our first class, first foyer into this space. Uh, we already have plans for three more classes that we're going to offer over the next few years in this space. And it's really about experimenting with this new technology that is shaping the way we consume, uh, the way we train, and also has big implications for how even manufacturing settings are run. Uh, I'm really excited too that we begin to appreciate that our, our mission is not just about creating innovative curriculum for our undergraduates and our postgraduates. Uh, one of the things we realized in talking to the community is that there was a big deficit in our pipeline of talent for underrepresented groups, particularly in technology. And to address that, we launched what's called our Future Leaders Initiative. And it's been running now for two years, and it's a partnership we have with local high school districts, Anaheim, Santa Ana, where we bring high school students and first year community college students to the business school in the summer to expose them to career opportunities in business in technology settings. And uh, I'm really happy to see the success of that program. We started off the first year with a, stu a student base of 40. Last year we had almost 120 students in that program, well over 200 applications, and so I really see a lot of promise going forward. And I should acknowledge Dr. Kevin Bradford, who is the faculty lead for that program, who recently received a University of California Award for Transformational Leadership for his leadership in creating that particular program. So in addition to making some major changes in our curriculum, we also have made some major changes in our operations. And one aspect of that is upgrading our facilities. So we've created two new classrooms, cutting edge classrooms that really bring in the technology that we have today. We've also retrofitted all of our existing classrooms so that they are set for dual delivery. So now we can have in-person uh, participants engage seamlessly with online participants to really offer potentially you know, a, a setting that draws students from all around the world to one space. Uh, we are sitting in one of our uh, new jewels, our undergraduate student success space, our first space that we've dedicated solely to supporting our undergraduate students. And we are just about to launch a campaign to name this space after Dean Andy Policano. Uh, we, we really thought it fitting to name it after Dean Policano because he was the dean that had the vision that helped execute the creation of our undergraduate program, which has gone from success to success and is now ranked number 30 in the nation. Uh, which is really quite amazing. And if you speak to our undergraduate students, you're, you'll be amazed at the talent that we get here. Uh, so that's been a big success story for us. I, uh, I also should say it's not just our physical assets. 
We've also created a digital twin of our classrooms. And so now we have the ability to deliver our curriculum in virtual reality in a digital twin of our facility, which is quite exciting. And we'll continue to experiment with that as well. Lastly, and as I said earlier, perhaps most importantly, uh, our ability to execute on our strategy has been driven by our talent. Um, one thing I'd like to highlight in particular is some of the amazing research that our faculty are doing to help drive forward our understanding of this notion of digital leadership and inclusive excellence. Uh, for example, the work that our marketing professor, Dr. Tanya Bradford, is doing around the role of race and how it shapes consumer behavior. Uh, the work that our strategy professor, Dr. Marguerite Weisserman, is doing around understanding the role that women play in boards and how when women participate in corporate boards, how that changes and augments the decision-making outcomes of those boards. And then the work that our accounting professor, uh, Dr. Devin Shanti Kumar, is doing, where she's looking at the role of trademarks in business innovation and how organizations are being more sophisticated in managing their intellectual property. These are all examples of how we're using our research to guide that future, future state of what we're doing as an organization. So this is just a, an example of some of the work that we're doing, but we're not resting on our laurels there. Uh, in the last three years, we've hired seven new faculty, uh, two experts in FinTech, an expert in sustainability. We've hired a new faculty director of our healthcare uh, center in management and policy. We've also hired in a new professor in data analytics. And so we're, we're building on that that base, that foundation of capability that I hope will continue to drive you know, new cutting edge research. Dean Williamson, from your perspective, what is the current state of the school and what are some challenges and opportunities? Well, I think we're coming off of a period of three amazing years. We've had some great milestones, none more important than the fact that this last year we graduated our largest class in the history of the Paul Murad School of Business. Uh, ultimately, that's the only number that really matters to me. That's just a count of the number of lives, not just those students, but the families that they represent that we're changing through the educational experience here. And we're on track, actually, for this year's class to even be bigger than last year. So that's phenomenal. Uh, we also have received tremendous recognition for the quality of our work. Our undergraduate program, as I mentioned earlier, ranked number 30 in the country. Our part-time MBA ranked number 28 in the country. Our full-time MBA ranked number 8 in terms of MBA degrees offered by public universities. All of these things, you know, collectively what they say is that we're doing work that matters, that's important, and is at a global standard. So that's very important. Uh, we were reaccredited last year, and so we received our reaccreditation for AACSB, which is very important. That's the global stamp of certification that tells everyone that we are providing a world-class capability here. And we're getting great support from our community. Um, I'm very excited. We recently uh, received the second largest gift, the largest gift from an alum in the history of the school, uh, from Lisa and Tal Hallbrook. Both are our alums of our fully employed MBA degree and they have named the Todd and Lisa Harbrook Center for Investment and Wealth Management. So we have a lot of really positive momentum. That said, uh, certainly there are some challenges that we're facing going forward, and not just us, but I think broader challenges that our community are facing. And I see these as things that will be a challenge for us, but also perhaps open up some doors for some opportunities. Uh, you cannot watch the news today, every day, without some concerns around economic uncertainty. And certainly that looms large over us. We're going through major transitions, not just here domestically, but globally around our economy. And you know, what are the implications that will have for our students? How will that impact their job outcomes? Um, but I think more importantly, what it represents for us is an opportunity to say, what are the skill sets that existing professionals need to be retooling around so that they're able to thrive in what we look like going forward. And uh, I think that is a, re a really unique opportunity for us to take a step back and ask ourselves, what new changes should we be making to our curriculum? What new programs should we be offering? Uh, another big change that's happening that will certainly impact us and is impacting all of us, uh, we talk a lot about technology. Technology is not a stable, static thing. It, it continues to evolve. And just like every newscast has something about the economy, today almost every newscast has something about artificial intelligence. And in fact, the newscast might have been written by artificial intelligence. Um, and that's going to continue to evolve and will continue to have a major impact on us, our actual operations, uh, what do we need to teach, how do we actually go about teaching it, um, what tools will our students need to learn, what will they use, and this is beyond just using students using AI to do their homework. I mean, this is a much more um, impactful thing, and we're trying to lean in on that. We want to actually 
ensure that our students are using artificial intelligence wherever possible in their curriculum because we believe that that is a tool that they will be using going forward and we want to prepare them here for that. But that's going to require us to make new investments. Um, we will continue to have to hire new types of talent and it certainly will mean we'll have to continue to upgrade some of the systems that we have here. And I, I think it's also important to say that, you know, if you think about one of the other big face challenges we're facing as a community, we as a society are, are trying to really understand how do we think about diversity and inclusion. This is something that is all across the news and it is impacting us in a lot of different ways, but from a business perspective, what is very clear and undisputable is going forward, our workforces, regardless of where we are in this country, are gonna be more diverse. They're gonna come from a wider variety of backgrounds. We're gonna have 18-year-olds working with 75-year-olds on a regular basis because we're, we're aging as a population. We're gonna have people from all different ethnicities, uh, religions, and backgrounds. How do we create the work environments that allow all of these individuals to thrive so that we have a workforce that allows our organizations and our communities to thrive? That's something that we have to start here. We have to create an environment here that really celebrates and really creates an uh, environment that celebrates the backgrounds and is inclusive. If we can do it here, um, it will develop a workforce here that can go out into the workplace to actually do this well. That means thinking through our curriculum. Uh, that means thinking through the research that we're doing. That means changing the experiences that our students have, not just domestically, but also making sure we're taking them to the right international experiences. So these are all things that are very much on our mind. Um, some of them we have some clear answers for. Some of those we're just starting. Uh, you know, we haven't figured them out yet, and uh, we're, we're excited about it. Maybe a little nervous as well, like all organizations, but I think the future is very bright. So as alumni, how can we contribute and participate in realizing this vision you've set for the school? Well, we have amazing alums. Uh, one of the things that I do when I travel around the world is I always take the time to meet with alums. And I've been to Brazil, Singapore, uh, Taipei. I've been to uh, Korea. I, 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 I've, I've met alums everywhere and they're always eager to engage and they're always excited to hear what we're doing back at the school. So um, I think I have a great alumni base and I, and I guess the call to action I would make would be around four things. Um, first and foremost, hire our students, right? When I talk to prospective students, one of the things I tell them is that you're not just coming to the school to get an education. You're joining a 15,000 plus anteater community of Paul Murat School of Business alums. This is a family. Uh, we like to look after each other. We support each other. And, you know, for especially our, our early career students, that first job, that first major professional opportunity, that, that changes the course of their life. And so if you're in a position as an alum to reach back and to give our students opportunities to interview with your companies or come and talk to our students about the opportunities in your companies, please do that. Uh, it allows us to change their life. It allows us to live up to the promise that we made when they came here that we were going to provide a community around them that supported them. And of course, if we're able to live up to that promise, it also continues to enhance our renown and our recognition because we know placement outcomes play a big part in our rankings. And so that allows us to continue to tell the story. So that'd be my first call. If you're an alum, reach back, you know, reach back and give an give a anteater an opportunity to start their career or to take that next step in their career through the organizations that you're currently leading. The second call that I'd ask is, uh, it's very important for us that the work we're doing is relevant to industry. And, and I'm particularly thinking about, for example, the research that we're doing. And, and our faculty are very excited about doing research that is in partnership with industry, answering questions with industry that allows us to not just shape the future of what business looks like, but to really have a meaningful impact with organizations. And so consider working with us around some of the bigger challenges you're facing in your company. We do a lot of different research projects with organizations and our faculty are already ex always excited to work with organizations because it gives them novel data, but also a tangible sense of success, of impact. And so consider working with us to co-design research initiatives that will support big problems in your organization and allow us to continue to generate world-leading research. Related to that, uh, consider working with us to develop your workforce. So we have our Leadership Development Institute. This was created so that we as a business school can provide non-degree, flexible, customizable options that allow us to upskill professionals that are in the workforce. If you're facing a retooling issue or you need to provide new skill sets to your leaders, reach out to us. We are a world-class business school that is here to provide that service for you. We'd be excited to do it and even more excited to do it if it was in support of our alums. 
The third thing I would ask, help us invest in this future talent pipeline that we know we need here in Orange County. And most clearly, the best way to do that is to support our students by providing funding for their scholarships. Um, we do not want to have a situation where students are not able to access the education we're providing. And certainly, the scholarship support that we're able to give our students goes a long way for allowing us to meet that goal of ensuring that we are a platform that all communities can use to be successful in business and entrepreneurship. And so I just acknowledge all the efforts to make sure that the financial issue is not a barrier to access to education. So if you have the means to do so, please support us in that way. And finally, just stay engaged. Uh, you know, we have a lot of events here. We do a lot of things, both in person and virtually. It's all about keeping our community connected. Please come back. Uh, if you just happen to be in town, stop by. We always want to see and talk to our alums. We have a bunch of great events coming up. Uh, in April, we will have the fourth annual Black Management Association Innovation Summit. We're going to have some fantastic speakers from around the country come and talk about innovation. Uh, would encourage individuals to come. That's April 5th and 6th. If you happen to be around, come to that event. But perhaps most immediately, come to homecoming. Uh, homecoming is going to be on March 2nd. Uh, we're going to have a fantastic gathering in Aldridge Park. We'll have a nice business school tent. Uh, with some great treats and it's just an unbelievable opportunity to fellowship uh, and you know reconnect with your classmates and hopefully meet new members of this phenomenal anteater community. Dean Williamson, thank you so much for being with us today and giving us your insight and your thoughts about where the school's at today. My pleasure. I want to thank Tamina and Dean Williamson and I want to ask everybody to join us March 2nd at homecoming and find ways to be involved and engaged in school.